Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Maria and I am the marketing director for Gainer Minden. And my name is Jean and I am the vice president of all things international at Gainer Minden. And between us, I think we have about 30 years of fitting experience um, and probably more if you count our experience actually dancing in point shoes. Yes. Um, so today we are here yes. to talk to you fine people about hard shanks. And when I say hard shanks, I mean this beautiful green bag that I have here, mm -hmm. and um, shank selection in general, and how you select the right shank, and how you know if the shank that you're wearing is right for you, and some pro tips about how to switch if you want to try something softer, and yeah, just general information about how shanks work. And one of the reasons we want to do this is because Jean and I both, and I think all of the fitters really that I've talked to at Gaynor Minden, um, and elsewhere, we've noticed in our time fitting that we come across a large percentage of dancers uh, who are wearing hard shanks who don't need to be, mm -hmm. and who maybe even maybe even shouldn't be. And uh, you know, why is this a problem? Well, it's problematic because if you're wearing a shank that is too hard for you. Um, it allows you to kind of sit and not use your foot properly. It mm -hmm. hinders your ability to articulate your foot and really access all those muscles. And um, it hinders overall your ability to progress in yeah. your technique and to strengthen yourself. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, the end goal of why we're doing this in the first place. So, you know, dancers wearing hard shanks that don't necessarily need them could happen for a number of reasons. Indeed. A lot of times I find that it's because maybe where they got fit, the only option was a hard shank, or they didn't even know we made other options. They right. thought that just Gainer Mindens were, were the green bag, and that's all they know because it's what all their friends wear. There are five. Yeah, <laughs> there are five options. bag colors. Yes. Five options for shanks, guys. Yeah, five. It could be that they tried on a friend's shoe. Mm -hmm. that was already kind of worn in and it felt good and so they thought they wanted to wear the same thing. Precisely. It could be because they are switching to gainer mindens and they're used to wearing a hard shank in a traditional point shoe and so they think that they automatically need a hard shank. And that often happens. I see that a lot with advanced dancers and professional mm -hmm. dancers where they are used to the way a traditional shoe feels when it's new and they, they like it very hard. Yep. They switch to a gainer minden and it automatically feels a little bit softer so they think scary. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I need a hard Gainer Minden, and usually that's not the case. Yeah, it could happen too because their fit, the Gainer Minden specifically, is maybe too wide, and so the dancer's not getting enough support from the rest of the shoe, which, spoiler alert, in Gainer Mindens, it is insanely important that your fit in your box and the width, so I'm talking about your box is down here and your width is up here, and even to, the extent, to that extent in the model of the shoe that you're wearing, is as supportive as possible before you even touch the support of the shank. Um, and then the last reason, which we'll address a little bit later in the video, is that uh, we come across dancers that feel like they need to be in the hard shank to be a strong dancer. Right. Right. Or that it means something if yes. you wear a hard shank. Um, Newsflash, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> the next question. I often get after mm -hmm. I've gone through this whole spiel about hard shanks and you know what they are and what they aren't is how do I know if I need a hard shank or how do I know if I should try something softer? Mm -hmm. And one of my pro tips is that if a dancer is putting on a pair of Gainer Minden Point shoes, um, generally you know in her first fitting, and she finds that she is unable to stand completely flat in the shoe. And what I mean by that, when she puts the shoe on and she stands flat on the floor, if she still feels this arch pushing strongly up against the bottom of her foot, yep. it means that her weight is not enough to flatten the shoe, which means that there is no possible yeah. way that she's gonna have the weight uh, and probably not the strength either to actually bend the shoe and push it through demi point. Right, and really work through the foot properly. Exactly. And one of the things that Gainer Minden wearers tell us that they love so much about the shoes is that when they stand flat in them, they feel really flat, really connected to uh, the floor. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if you feel that pushing up right from the start, it's it affects your stability. Yeah, and it's only going to get worse mm -hmm. as you dance. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. The other thing worth noting is that, uh, and you've said this before, mm -hmm. flexibility and strength kind of lie at separate ends of the spectrum. And depending on where you lie on that spectrum, everybody's trying to work towards the center. So, I mean, you 
ask your friends that have super, super archy feet or ask professional dancers that you come across that have super, super archy feet. Those dancers are and should be constantly working on strength, strength in their feet. And the there are different schools of thought here, but mm -hmm. generally the best way to build strength is to work through your full range of motion. Absolutely. Which means you are going from flat to demi to three-quarter to point every mm -hmm. time you go up and down. And if you are if you're in a super, super, super hard shank that's not letting you do that, you're missing out on a lot of strengthening opportunities. Absolutely. And on the opposite end of the spectrum are the people who are very, very strong, who could almost practically stand up on point <laughs> without a shoe. And these folks are usually working more on their flexibility. Mm -hmm. Um, in which case they too are going to be better served generally by a softer shoe so they can really work through that full range of motion. Yeah. Um, so everybody's somewhere along that spectrum and we're all trying to get to this middle point which I mean as far as I'm concerned that's the holy grail and it doesn't, <laughs> probably doesn't exist probably but everybody's exist. working towards something. Yeah. Um, other things to keep in mind if you cannot control, so if you're wearing a hard shank and you feel like it's kind of bossy, right? Like it's kind of, <laughs> It's maybe not a great word, but it's, it's if it feels springy, if it feels like it's kind of tossing you around and you feel like you really can't control mm -hmm. uh, what's happening below your knees and you know on your feet, then you should probably try something softer. Also, if you're having trouble with your heel slipping off your shoe, um, <laughs> heel slipping off your shoe, heel slipping off your foot, um, the heel of your shoe slipping off your foot, then I mean, A, check the fit. Right, because it might be that your shoe is too short. That can definitely too happen when your shoe is not fitted properly. Right, but it can also be um, exacerbated by a hard check. Absolutely, and what we mean by that is that our shoes, in particular, mm -hmm. um, you have to push through the demi point. So this is a hard. This is a very hard shoe. Yeah, this shoe does not want to. <laughs> make this position. Yeah. It wants to come back to its original position. Um, so when you find that that is happening to you, a lot of tension. there's going to be a lot of tension on here and it wants to come off your foot. I highly recommend that to any dancer that says they're having a heel slippage problem. Mm. Um, first try a soft shank and two, recheck your fit. Yeah. And if you're looking to try a softer shank, you've been in the hard for ages or even just once and you're like, you know, I really want some more articulation, I really want to try out this softer shank and kind of see, see what it's all about. Is. Yeah. Mm. There's a few things that will make that transition easier. Mm -hmm. One is to get completely refit. So don't just order the same size you've been ordering in the softer shank. That might be where you end up. Right. Again, but it's always good to go back to your fitter and start barefooted, no padding, nothing additional. Spacers, if you wear them, definitely right. wear those, but yes. nothing additional that's gonna go around your foot or add width, because when you add width and you suddenly have to go to a wider shoe to accommodate that width, that is immediately when you start losing support from this, you know, the size of the shoes, which is, which is so important. What we hear when dancers are fit really, really well, like when they find their as close to ideal point shoe as possible, they forget that they are wearing something. Yeah. And you can only achieve that in a shoe that is soft enough so that it feels like it's a natural part of you, but also one that you're not stuffing lots of stuff into. Yeah, and this is a good place where if you're nervous about switching or if you're nervous about having enough support, mm -hmm. maybe try getting two, shoe, two pairs of shoes or hanging on to your old hard shanks while you get a new softer shank and use the softer shank at bar, yeah. right? When you have something else to support you and you're doing strengthening exercises anyway. And then if you want, switch back to your hard shank for center when mm -hmm. you're a little more on your own and you need a little more support from your shoe. That's also 100% okay. Absolutely, absolutely. And some dancers will actually choose to wear a softer game when and say they may wear a supple for mm -hmm. their point technique class and then they'll right. pull out their extra flex when they're working on their variation or partnering or partnering work, anything like that. Yeah, and one, uh, one other thing that I find a lot when I start talking about hard shanks and the need for softer shanks is mm -hmm. that dancers will say to me, well, I, I had a hard shank and then I switched to something softer and it died too quickly mm -hmm. or it didn't last long enough. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand that as a person who wore traditional point shoes and went through them weekly and could really probably only afford to do that because I was working in a dance workshop and getting them <laughs> at a discount. So I, I completely understand the need to make your shoes last longer. And 
you know, any Gator Minden, no matter what the shank is, whether it's a pianissimo or if it's a hard shank, should last longer than your paste shoe. Like that yes. is that is a constant. But we should have a little discussion about what too long is. Right. Or what too quickly really means. I kind of mm -hmm. define that term a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly certain that the average lifespan for a paper and paste shoe is 10 to 12 hours. Something like that, give or take. Right, yeah. which is not long. I mean, think about when I was dancing pre-professionally and you're on your shoes an hour, if not more, a day, that's a pair of shoes a week. Approximately, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Gainer Mendez, on the flip side, you know, we have a lot of literature that says three to five times longer than traditional paste shoes. That's correct. If you do the math to work that out in hours, that's like, 30 to 60 hours. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're dancing on point daily for several days, hours a day, right, five days a week, then mm -hmm. that's that's about a three a week. to four weeks. Yeah, I would say it's about three to four weeks, give or take. And that's also if you don't rotate your shoes, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of dancers do. Yeah. Um, but the the point that we're trying to drive home here is that just because your hard shoes can last. 60, 90, 100, 120 hours of dance. Doesn't mean they should. Doesn't mean that you should wear them for that long. You know, it's it's being a little bit more really realistic about how long, long your shoes be. last. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, which kind of addresses one of my earlier statements, which was dancers that are selecting a hard shank because they think that there's some cachet behind needing a hard shank and that mm -hmm. it, you know, it means something if you wear a hard shank because it makes you a strong dancer. Mm -hmm. Let us be two people in your life to assuage your fears uh, and tell you that that is not true. It does not mean anything if you wear a hard shank. It doesn't mean that you are a strong dancer. It doesn't mean that you are a weak dancer. It just means that you're wearing a hard shank. And, and, story. <laughs> yeah, and the goal of Dancing on Point is not to break your shoes all the time. Mm -mm. Um, the goal is to, to get stronger and to yep. work your feet and to continue your journey into being the best dancer that you can possibly be. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, some of the most beautiful and amazing dancers that we know yes. uh, wear very soft shoes because they are very strong um, yep. and they really are not relying on the shoes to help them. Now, that being said, there are dancers out there who absolutely love and need hard shanks and there's nothing wrong if that is you um, but what we want to try to explain to you guys is that quite frequently you can often be better served by a slightly softer shank and don't be afraid to try yeah and I think the key if you're in a hard shank is you know the hard shank is not bad if you are still using it correctly Absolutely. Right? So the hard shank is fine if you are still rolling through and your teacher is still watching you or your coach or mm -hmm. the audience is still able to see you roll from flat to demi to three quarter to full point up and back down. <laughs> so again, the, the key here is proper technique. If your shank is hindering you from having proper technique, you need to try a different shank. Absolutely. And newsflash, I actually used to wear a feather when I was doing the Mindens. Yeah, I like my shoes super soft. What did you wear? Uh, I was back and forth between extra flex and supple. Well, there you go. I kind of like the supple better. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of wraps us up here. If you still have questions, I totally understand. There is a lot of stuff around our shanks and how they function and how you should find the right one for you. So feel free to let us know below. You can always email fitters at dancer.com. The women that answer that are spectacular and are happy to, to help as much as they can. Mm -hmm. Tune in for Fitting Fridays. We have numbers of ways to get in contact with us and ask fitting questions, and we are more than happy to answer them all the time. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.